Every flight has a patch. Even the agency has a patch. <laughs> Here's our flight patch, our cake. We haven't eaten that yet. And we're suiting up uh, in the suit room in the crew quarters at KSC. There's me, of course, and our pilot, Mark Polanski. Doesn't know what it's going to be like, but he knows it's going to be good. Tom Jones, very relaxed. Beamer, I guess he's relaxed. He's not saying much. And finally, Marsha getting all prepared for her trip to orbit. Just heading out uh, on the Astro van going to the pad, which you're going to see here in a second. I don't know what you could say about sitting on top of a rocket uh, all loaded up and ready to go. It was pretty exciting. And uh, six seconds before launch, the solids light. And, excuse me, yeah, not the solids, I hope. <laughs> then the solids light. Yeah, that's why I'm the pilot and he's the commander. <laughs> Water going down, we clear the tower, and uh, about now I'm starting to wake up. It was just uh, tremendous uh, going uphill. I uh, can't tell you, it's hard to describe the, the feeling of acceleration as uh, you throttle up, uh, you're rolling, uh, you just feel all of that power as uh, you're heading uphill. <laughs> Uh, this is kind of the view I think the folks saw down there as the moon's coming up over there on the left in the glow. And I don't think that this video probably comes close to doing it justice, and it looks pretty fantastic. See the shock waves coming off the vehicle? And watch the, SS, uh, the SRBs come off, which makes everybody happy. Eight and a half minutes uh, after uh, we're going to be on orbit, you can kind of see us down here. And then uh, pretty soon we're opening up those payload bay doors and getting the first glimpse uh, out the, uh, the windows uh, at the laboratory. Well, we got right to work on stowing all of our equipment. <laughs> Marsha unstows her hair. <laughs> and we're ready for the rendezvous. As we talked about before, we're going to bring our docking port up to touch the docking port on the bottom of the Unity node. And this is a view out the, we have a camera looking straight up our docking port. And uh, there's me flying a vehicle out the back window and uh, all of us working to uh, make it happen. A view from service module as we come up and, and actually we're doing our tail forward spin around maneuver. And then we're getting closer to Unity and they're seeing us as closer to them. You can see the lab in the payload bay. We're much closer now, probably about uh, 20 or 30 feet away. The uh, bottom of the docking port's being illuminated by the, the lights that we have shining up to keep it in view. Here we come down to a couple of feet away. You see the, the orbiter docking system ring extended on a couple of uh, spring shock absorber looking things, and you'll see why in just a moment. And that's the aiming cross that we use to fly up and keep everything in the center. Actually, there's a, quite a bit of forgiveness in this. You're allowed about three inches and three degrees of uh, error uh, as you come together. And then the ring is retracted and brought down so that the two surfaces are touching each other and then there's some very powerful hooks that emerge from the lower surface and grab a hold of the uh, the station and pull the two vehicles together and make a hard mate. And here's the, the view out the front windows after we're docked. We are all over that station or it's all over us. And then we uh, came inside. Here's Chef ringing the bell welcoming us inside and um, we're looking around the node right there. So for those of you that have worked on the node, um, let's see what we can see in here. Well, mostly us and cables. There's my centerline birthing system camera right there. So the lab will go attach lab here is what it says on the outside. Uh, PMA first, then lab, as those of you who wrote that. Um, so we all got on board and here's the obligatory photo op. <laughs> And then we went to work. Had to get the arm out, so there's the arm, there's the lab, and the rest is history at this point, which I'm glad of. Yeah, part of the fun of getting ready for an EVA is wearing the funky underwear, actually. 
And uh, actually, this is the underwear that we wear under there. It uh, has liquid cooling lines through it. And then uh, you don't really put the suit on, you get into it, as you can see. And um, as you can see, you can probably see how tight it is in there, but one of the advantages of being uh, in space, once again, is that uh, Roman can go all over the airlock to put it, to get us dressed, and that's what he did. And uh, like I said, he did a fantastic job of that. And you can see he actually can put his, <laughs> get up on top <laughs> of the ceiling there to put on our helmets. Okay, we're emerging into the payload bay for the first EVA, and uh, Marsha's got the uh, docking port ready to move. And I guess uh, you can see her moving the uh, docking port, the PMA, uh, off the front of the node, and she's moving it into position. This is the, uh, the part of the Z1 truss where the uh, PMA was going to go. Here's Tom out here going, Mom back, and here's the PMA on the end of the arm. And here's the view from his helmet camera as he uh, gets it ready to be in position. Then I got off of that, came down and grabbed the lab, and uh, Beamer gets out of the way. <laughs> Smart man. <laughs> Pulling the lab out of the bay here, it's, uh, the hard part is done, um, and I've picked the rate up. You can see we've, it took about 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes to flip the lab, and we can't show you that, so we're going to go through it a little bit faster here. They put the lab in 180 degrees out, and I've been doing nothing but trying to explain why, and, you know, pick a reason. I don't know. <laughs> here it is at 90 degrees, just about 90 degrees, and the best view was what Tom and Beamer had outside. So here's the lab 90 degrees to the payload bay being shot from up on the truss. Continue to flip it around. It just was amazing, and uh, so the, the tourists are always taking pictures of everything. <laughs> <laughs> almost, almost all the way around, and there it is, all the way around and getting ready to be put onto the node. And it just slid in there as happy as could be. There it is, all attached. Yay is right. <laughs> <laughs> And here's the, after signing the paperwork, we uh, opened the hatch and then we took a camera in first to let the um, people of the space program and of, uh, of the world take a view of this new piece of space hardware first. And this is the way it looked when we opened the hatch, very clean, pristine, and as I said, the air was clean and, and, uh, and, and cool and just a wonderful, looked like a wonderful place to be. Here we are coming in to take a look. Like I said, first thing that happened, Sergey said, watch this, and did his four-point roll. <laughs> and the commander, not to be outdone, <laughs> that poor pilot just can't figure out which way is up there. And again, we talked about moving the rack around, and uh, when something gets in your way, you just kind of float past it. Uh, lots of cables, cameras, you name it out there as we're moving this thing in place. Here we are on EVA2, moving the PMA down to the end of the uh, lab. Now, this is the view from the centerline berthing system camera. And this is the, the target that I used. I was looking at my own reflection here in the mirror on the PMA, which was the best cue that we used at all. There's the PMA getting ready to get attached to the lab. Once the, the uh, PMA was attached to the front of the lab, I got to work on the, on the arm. Marsha had uh, given me a good place to step into it, and here we are removing the uh, PDGF, the grapple fixture from the orbiter sidewall, and then I was able to pull that away and then take the ride up to the lab to the installation point. And then Bob met me there, and with our two uh, pistol grip tools, we were able to bolt it into place and uh, install all the wiring that would get it ready for serving as the base of the station a robotic arm. So we're finishing up that task right here. Then, uh, as Bob mentioned, we got the window shutter installed. That was his job. And here he is opening the shutter for the first time. And uh, there's a blanket that protects the window during launch. And so the two of us peeled back that coating and looked inside Destiny from outside. What a moment this was for us to look in and, hey, here comes Sergey. And uh, the whole crew was in there, and they were able to come over and say hello. They also asked us to come back in about 20 minutes. Uh, it was dark outside, so we'd just have our, our floodlights illuminating it, but 
when the sun came up, Bob came back over for another photo op. That's his gold visor. And in it, you see reflected the window of destiny. And then they brought over the IMAX camera. So here's Bob uh, locking into place with his body restraint tether. And uh, Sergey was the camera operator for this uh, photo pass. And he says, stand by one. I'll have the camera right back. And there's the 3D IMAX camera. And we've screened some raw footage of this camera. And the view outside into the payload bay just knocks your socks off. Can't wait to see the movie that comes out of this work. The third spacewalk was my turn to ride the arm. And uh, the primary uh, purpose of this spacewalk was to move a spare radio antenna that was connected to the sidewall of the payload bay. And there we are. I'm on the arm um, on the upper part of the picture. And down on the lower part with the red stripes is Tom. Tom unhooks it from the payload bay. I grab it, and off we go. And Marsh is taking me for the ride of my life here. <laughs> um, as you can see, it was quite dark, but uh, I ended up about 20 feet above the lab and uh, holding this 250-pound uh, monster, and then uh, put it down uh, on the Z1 truss so we could stow it there. And that's a spare, just in case the primary breaks, the uh, station crew can use that one. Our next job, uh, as we talked about with the slides, was to go up the uh, power truss, the P6 truss, and uh, take some pictures of a radiator being deployed. So this is actually a picture of me um, translating up there. And then we watched them take the radiator out. And they're actually controlling this from inside. And we're just doing photo documentation. And there you see on the left, the radiator deployed. And so then we continued up the power truss, the P6 truss, and started to look down. At this point, we're about 130 feet up from the payload bay. And you can look down the truss. You can see the lab off to the top. And then we, uh, after that, we came back down for some more work on the lab. And that's a picture Tom's taken of me. Well, we already saw a slide of exercise, so here it is in motion. And I think we talked about how you get a lower body workout, but we haven't talked about how you work out your abs. <laughs> then there's the stationary four-point roll. We're going to take a tour of the station now as it was when we left it. We're leaving the service module. There's their central post uh, section with all their control. We're coming into the section that connects the service module to the FGB. This is a hatch right here with a cover on it. This is the FGB, this uh, uh, cargo stowage uh, module right here behind all of these panels. Uh, our things are stowed. Sometimes they're out in the aisleways here. Right here is where Yuri was sleeping on the wall. There are handrails everywhere. Um, this was actually a pretty clean module, you stowage guys. Look at this. It's the way it needs to be. This is the way they move their air back and forth between the different modules here. This is the section that now connects the FGB to the node. Here's the PMA that we're coming through here. This was the hardest turn to make. You get up ahead of steam and you'd smack right into the top of that. They had one of their spacesuits stowed right here. Now we are in the node. This is the lab, which we have seen before. And uh, so we'll just take a turn here and head for the shuttle. Down through this PMA, which was our front door there is the hatch to that. We are now in our airlock. We are moving air back and forth between the shuttle and the station. Here's the hatch. Here's one of the uh, EVA suits. Another 90 degree turn here through the airlock, and we're in the mid deck. Well, unfortunately, our week docked with uh, International Space Station Alpha came to a close, and we uh, Shep rings the bell, and it's time for the Atlantis crew to leave. And it looks like I'm waiting for Shep to ring the bell. I'm actually waiting to figure out how to do this without hurting myself again. <laughs> Following me is Roman, and the rest of the crew follow after him. And then finally, when it's time for Marsha to go, <laughs> And I think this crew was sad to see us go. There was another crew coming up in three or four weeks, but uh, they don't get a lot of company up there. This is a, a view of the Russian solar arrays and uh, undocking. 
As we back away here, uh, you could see the uh, station uh, looking like it's moving when in fact uh, we're the ones that are leaving it. Out the, uh, the window out the back, you can go ahead and see part of uh, the PMA as we slowly back away. Um, for the rendezvous guys that are here, it was a tremendous uh, honor to get to do this and it flew uh, fantastically. It was really great. Uh, up here you could see what was a, a laser that we had a handheld laser to go ahead and get distance and range. You could see the laboratory that is now in place and you could see the window and that was the window shutter that's behind there and those guys were looking out at us as we backed away and that's where we used to be docked. A great view taken from uh, the station as we fire some of our uh, RCS reaction control system jets maintaining attitude as we back away. You really can feel those things uh, as they pulse we slowly backed away to uh, 450 feet and uh, here are some views as you could see we talked about those gold arrays up on top of P6 as we slowly maneuvered in a half a lap around the station taking a look at our handiwork and uh, it was really quite the thrill to get to do that although every once in a while I had to ask for some help because everybody was blocking my, my view through the window taking pictures. <laughs> Great shot as we came over South America and the Andes here. And you could see the shadow of the shuttle on top of the station as we uh, said our farewells. Sorry. Time to come home, close the payload bay doors. Did this three times on this mission. <laughs> And pillow bay is empty, time to get dressed in the orange suits. Here's uh, Marsha taking her turn. This is like being born again, and <laughs> although it's probably a little bit worse. <laughs> and Bob and I were the valets helping her get dressed. See, we did a good job there. There's the plume coming out the back as we enter the atmosphere. And gravity begins to return to the shuttle and the crew, and there's Marsha with her checklist as the flight engineer. Coming on home in the final turn, we're coming down at about 20 degrees, six times steeper than an airliner, six to seven times at about 300 knots. We're at Edwards. There's not a lot of water down here. Well, it used to be. I guess it's a dry lake bed, and there's runway 22 as we're rolling out on final. We dive down on final till we get to about 2,000 feet above the ground, and then we, we're aiming at a point short of the runway, and when we get to 2,000 feet, we start a gentle pull-up. Here's a little anticipation cues telling us it's time to pull up. And uh, we pull up and, and get on an inner glide slope that's about a degree and a half, a very shallow glide slope that you can control very well. At about 300 feet above the ground, uh, Roman lowers the landing gear. You don't like to put it down too early because of all the drag it causes, and you don't want to put it down too late because of the drag it would cause on the runway. <laughs> and we float down the uh, runway about 2,000 feet and make a couple of landings here. And then uh, Roman puts out the drag chute, which gives a nice little tug, makes you know that it's out there. And then at 185 knots, we lower the nose to the runway. And you'll see that the, uh, the nose gear touchdown is a little more firm than the main gear. You can see the airspeed or the ground speed now on the upper left. And uh, we slow down. At about 60 to 70 knots, we, we cut the chute away so that it doesn't damage the engine bells. Uh, this is, after all, a reusable spacecraft. It had flown 20-something missions when we flew it, and it's got many more in it. And uh, you should all be very proud of the, uh, the hardware and the training and the operations that go into our space flights. We, we do a really great job here at NASA. <laughs>